Hey everyone, so on today's show, we're going to look at the seven things that I love the most about the Pierce Brosnan era, and that is coming up right now. So if you don't already know, I was born in the 90s, and because of that, I am a massive fan of the Pierce Brosnan era of James Bond. This was my childhood era, the one that meant the most to me still to this day, the one I care about and think about the most. I love the Pierce Brosnan era. It is the era that introduced me to James Bond. It is the era that modernized James Bond, and I also felt it was led by my opinion, one of the most underrated actors nowadays, because people do often forget a bit more about him. Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan was a great James Bond. Unfortunately, you could say that some of the films didn't really support him or allowed him to really show off his talents, but without a doubt, this is my favourite era of James Bond. There are so many things that I really would love to share and talk about the Brosnan era in detail, but on today's video, we're starting a whole new thing on this channel called 007 Things I Love, where I take seven things out of a certain part of James Bond and explain to you why I love it so much. And today we are kicking that off, starting off with my favorite era and looking at the 007 things I love about the Pierce Brosnan era. But before we get into that, everyone, can I ask if you're ready, why not consider like, comment, and subscribe to the channel? We're trying to reach a thousand subscribers for the end of the year, so if you can help us, that would be absolutely amazing. And everyone, without further ado, let's get into the first thing that I love about the Pierce Brosnan era. Now, the first thing that I really want to bring up here is I feel that in the Brosnan era, we had some of the best villains of all time. Now, don't get me wrong, every now and then you get a great, like, Goldfinger or, you know, Hugo Drax or Franz Sanchez. They're really, really great. But if you look at the Brosnan era of James Bond, we had some incredible villains for Bond to go up against. Starting off, you had 006, Alex Trevelyan, played by the brilliant Sean Bean. Again, my first Bond villain and the one I almost, if you will, measure all the others up to. He was such an incredible villain. Then following on from that, you get something completely opposite but brilliant at the same time. A media mogul in Elliot Carver, bent on just starting a war just for ratings. This film, 20 Hour Dies, foreshadowed a lot of modern day, which I think people, again, really do underappreciate. Following on from that, we get actually the real proper first female villainette in the franchise in the form of Electra King. And on that note, everyone, I still firmly believe that we need more female villains in the Bond series. But as well as that, we got like the great Renard played by Robert Carlyle with such an interesting backstory and those two playing off each other was so wonderful in The World's Not Enough. And even if you're not a fan of Die Another Day, which I know so many of you maybe aren't, you can't deny that Toby Steam's Gustav Graves was just a hell of fun. Gustav Graves, to me, is where I shout out that champagne villain and living it up to the first. He is hamming it up, he is cheesing it up, and every time I see him in Die Another Day, I can't deny I am absolutely enjoying him. I think if you just look at the ray of Bond villains Pierce Brosnan got, it's absolutely fantastic. It really did have a homage to the old school Bond villains of the books and the old films, but really brought them up to date. They're such great, iconic characters, and that, for me, is definitely a good way to start off the things I love in the Brosnan era. The next thing I want to bring up, small thing, but for me it's important, is without a doubt he has the greatest gun barrel sequence of any Bonds. Now, obviously technology was in its prime here when it comes to the gun barrels. Daniel Kleinman created, I think, for many people, still to this day, the most iconic gun barrel sequences in the franchise. It's beautiful, it's sleek, it's modern, it just, the blood and everything, Brosnan's stance in it, I think he's, to this day, I think Pierce Brosnan has the best gun barrel stance of any Bond actor that has been. It's a small thing, but all us Bond fans love the gun barrel sequence. It's like Christmas morning at the beginning of every Bond film until the Daniel Craig era. And it's just, I think, without a shadow of a doubt, the gun barrel has never looked better. That is another thing I love about this era. I don't even mind at all in Die Another Day that much when you have the gun barrel and suddenly happens, DUCK! The next thing that I really love in the Brosnan era is how truly the ladies of Bond really advance and pave way for some great iconic characters. I'm not saying anything bad about how Bond ladies were treated in the past, they're a product for their time, but if you look at the Brosnan era, this is when they really started to become much more. You had some great ones every now and then, like you know Major Anya and Massiva, you had Pussy Galore, you had some really great characters, but it was truly the Brosnan era. 
that really started to be strong, powerful, awesome female characters, which I absolutely love. Starting again from Godai, you got Natalia, a great character, just an enormity in the Bond universe, but gets thrust into this. And again, on the opposite side of that, you have probably one of the greatest henchmen in the Bond series of Zina Altov, Fanka Yasmin. If you grew up in the 90s, she is always going to be engraved in your memory, believe me. Then following on from that, you had Paris Carver, an interesting character, and then Wei Lin, Michelle Yeoh, such an incredible character. What an incredible addition to the Bond franchise. She was so amazing. So much so, still to this day, if they ever did a spin-off of Wei Lin, count me going to the cinema. I, just, just take my money. Take my money. Then following on from that, you had, as I mentioned earlier, the first female Bond villain, Electra King, played wonderfully by Sophie Marceau. Really an amazing tour de force. And even counteract that you had Denise Richards as Dr. Christmas Jones. Now I'm gonna put my hand up here everyone I did not know who Denise Richards was before this film. This was the first introduction to her so I've always slightly more believed in them shall we say most people as being a Bond girl and a nuclear scientist. Just saying. Then to top it off in Die Another Day you have two really great characters very similar but also so iconically separate. You have Halle Berry's Jinx, which is a great character, which they were even developing a spin-off show for maybe potentially her. And then opposite that, you had Rosamund Pike at the beginning of her career playing Miranda Frost, such a wonderful character, such a great bad guy as well. These two really complemented Pierce Brosnan and Die Another Day so much. And just looking at the women here, this is where you really see, I think, great advancements in representation. Such brilliant, iconic characters that people still to this day remember in the Bond franchise, without a shadow of a doubt. Another thing that I really, really love about this era is when it comes to like the MI6 regulars, the MI6 family, you know, you've got your Q, your Money Penny, your Tanner, and even in this era, Robson. This to me has the best, if you were, MI6 family of any generation. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of people who really love, you know, the Ray Fiennes M, the Naomi Harris Money Penny, the Ben Wishaw Q, and I am one of them without a shadow of a doubt, but nothing compares to that MI6 regular family that we got in the Brosnan area. Starting off, obviously, you have Judy Dench, in my opinion, the best and my most favorite M of all time. You had Colin Salmon as Charles Robinson, a new character created to be basically M's bodyguard. You have Rory Kitchen as Bill Tanner, absolutely wonderful. And of course, Samantha Bond as Miss Money Penny. In my opinion, one of the best castings they ever did in the franchise. She was an absolutely wonderful M. And what was great about this era, I think more than even like the Daniel Craig era MI6 regulars, was how well they played off each other. You really felt the camaraderie. You really felt such a strong connection to them. And even when John Cleese's Q came in, it was a wonderful addition. Little shout out here because I didn't forget him. A little shout out here to Desmond Lewin's Q. Obviously, this is the last era that he played Q, but my God, did he give us such memorable moments in the Brosnan era as Q. That I think some of the highlights of his Q career are definitely in the Brosnan era. Another thing that I've just really got to say that I love about the Brosnan era is outside of the movies, how the Brosnan era really started the golden age of James Bond video games. If you're like me, you played GoldenEye N64, you played Asian Under Fire, you played Nightfire, everything or nothing. All these great James Bond games, and they all came out of the Brosnan era. These are games that are solidly engraved in my memory, and games I still love and play to this day. I still have a PS2 because I want to play Asian Under Fire, Nightfire, and everything or nothing again and again and again. Those games I just play so much. It really can't be understated how much important I feel the Brosnan era gave to this because these games helped a new generation of Bond fans come to light as well as the movies. It was the synchronization between these video games and the films eventually coming out that really grew a whole 90s generation of Bond fans and Brosnan's era was the one that brought it in. Without a shadow of a doubt, when I think of the Brosnan era, yes, I think of the four movies, but definitely right behind that, I'm thinking of those strong, solid video games. The years of playing Goldeneye and the N64, the amount of times I did the multiplayer on Nightfire with friends, the amazing story in third-person game, everything or nothing. It's just all fantastic memories and something I cherish so much when I think of the Brosnan era. My last reason, and probably the biggest thing that I love about the Brosnan era of James Bond is, without it, we to this day will not have James Bond. 
James Bond could easily have died out in the end of the 80s, at the end of the Cold War. We wouldn't have the Daniel Craig era of James Bond if it wasn't for the Brosnan era of James Bond. They took a gamble, they took a risk, they realised the Cold War's over and they changed it, they modernised it. The Brosnan era, without a shadow of a doubt, is so important in the Bond pantheon, the Bond lexicon, because it really showed that Bond could continue even without the Cold War backdrop. Every new film, every new thing that comes out after the Daniel Craig era, in fact, after Die Another Day, we owe a big grade of gratitude to the Brosnan era because it made it possible that Bond really, truly could continue past its literary origins. A lot of people as well praise a lot Daniel Craig about how he humanised James Bond, but everyone forgets as well how much in this era and this modernization that Brosnan actually humanized James Bond as well. He really tried to show, like, even he has friends who betrayed him and, how, and the cost it takes to be who he is. You know, past relationships, the fact that he can get injured, the fact that he even can get captured and tortured sometime. Brosnan really started to show the human side of James Bond. It's something that Daniel Craig took and ran with in a different direction, but it was thanks to Brosnan that it got started, and that cannot be understated how important that is to Bond. So everyone, that is my seven things that I love about the Brosnan era of James Bond. I want to know, do you have different thoughts to me? Do you disagree with me? I want to know. Comment down below and tell me what you think about this as well. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe again to the video. And don't forget to check out all other forms of Pierce Brosnan content on this channel if you would like this video. As always everyone, my name's Henry Stevens and I'm the Bond Geek. Good night.